Hello, and welcome to Jaker Gaming, where we're not always playing a game, but there's always a game to be played. And right now, the game that's being played is Firewatch. A friend of mine just played this, he said it was very good, and highly recommended it. I have no idea what's going on for the game, so let's just jump right into it. Huh. <laughs> In cooperation with Panic Incorporated. Something, a very comforting thought that Panic was put into this. In Boulder, Colorado. Am I gonna read this whole time? Who's Julia? Is she hot? Am I. Oh! Oh! I see the orange are interactions. She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. <laughs> you're, you're, you're pretty. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. Uh, you reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Way to go, Henry. You did it. Now we're looking around. Okay. Oh. You know, game doesn't always include bodies when you look down. I like the addition of the piece of belt that is flopping around. Uh, okay, let's pick up a backpack, I guess. In an elevator. I'm just gonna definitely display subtitles. And we're gonna turn down. The mouth. The mouse sensitivity. A little bit. All right. I'm going to not have done that. I'm going to go back and undo the mouse sensitivity and I'm going to get over it because that was worse. Okay. All right. Can I interact with everything? No, I cannot. Cannot pick up a brick. I imagine that's my car. Jeez, I can't do it. What's the red glow over here? There's no red lights. There's not even anything red to glow off of. None of my buttons do anything yet. Load my throat just... <laughs> Listen, I know it's a backpack, but it... I, I mean, it's got a little weight, but... I'm not... I'm not so sure about throwing a backpack into the bed of a truck. Maybe in the passenger seat. Or just in the cab in general. Anyway. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in, share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. Two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it into her glass. There's also intimidating, but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Well, Julia's eyes light up at the beagle. So I'm going to pick the beagle that she's going to name Bucket. Bucket is a good dog. And a week later, you've totally forgotten about the German Shepherd named Mayhem. Julia loves him. And you love him too. Four years later, it's 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the de high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart. We're good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. That'd be pretty good. 
In that case, we should probably get married. Hey, I, I'd like that. You'd say? These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Oh, I saw a wedding ring on that hand. Oh, we got more. What? I have a utility belt and a regular belt. Oh, catch the leaf. Oh, hi, fire danger. Ah, I see. Remember the name of the game, Firewatch. High fire danger today. Thoroughfare trailhead. Where are we? I have to imagine we're at that square, the two forks look out, right? Or are we not? On, we have to be on this map. That'd be stupid. Learn to live with. <laughs> <laughs> Learn to live with bears. I am an experienced hiker. hiker. I hike. Why? I hike to the fridge every day. The setup of this game is very strange. I don't know why we did that whatsoever. But a year later. It's a Thursday night, and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. You're not quite drunk. Or, excuse me. She's not quite drunk. She's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Neither of these are good options. But you get mad. I didn't, I, that is a little aggressive. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. She tells you to fuck yourself and not to be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. A year later, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. Ha! I frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. There's no doubt. Do you think it was right? You are very pretty. What is happening? I think what's happening here is not... Is like in the actual time. And it's just like backdrop context to something. Because otherwise this doesn't make any sense. So I have to be going out... I have to have grabbed my bag and gone out on the pickup truck on the same day that I went to the trailhead, and it is currently today. So I wonder what really... Ooh. Eight miles. Okay, let's go. Okay, so there's no jumping, but there's climbing. That's sun going down, bro. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy a walking bucket at night. Bucket is going to die, I can almost guarantee it. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Fuck! The dog! Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. You beat his goddamn face in. That's just the, that's just the, the line. I'm not, I don't like to say that in general, but that's the line. Your arm gets cut up, but when you beat the guy to a pulp, you don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Two years later, 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. These are two bad options. 
because Yale is a great job. Given if she was offered a job at Yale, she could get another one. But convincing her not to take the job will cause the relationship to bend. And convincing her to commute 2,000 miles also will likely cause the relationship to end. But no matter how far away Julia is, I will wait for her. I'll ask her if she commutes. If she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard. She'll do it if you don't want to move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times a semester. One year later, 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. Julia has a mental condition of an unknown kind. She was found crying in the stairwell. As much as I would love to make macaroni and drink wine, this is something you have to confront right away. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia may, might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41, genetically predisposed, or didn't get enough sunlight. You both decide to keep it for secret for now. I'm worried that Julia is going to be lost in this forest. Or Julia's dead and I'm just walking out into the forest, I'm not sure. But I do notice a significant lack of Julia on this hike. Oh, what the? <laughs> that why what why is that picture in my journal <laughs> sorry <laughs> that, that caught me a little by surprise oh <laughs> bucket is getting older Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house a week later she goes back to the university. Nineteen eighty seven. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason. It has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope. And your unborn children, little idiots. Other days, you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell their family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. After a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggested that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. A an offer like that, a thought like that, should not take a couple of months to consider when she's de actively deteriorating. But okay. Julia is best in a full-time care facility. As difficult a decision as that is. I will visit her every single day. Up the primitive trail, that's barely a trail. Yo, am I playing a book? Like, what's going on here? Is there an actual game here? 
Not that it's not interesting. It's just... Why? I'm gonna... Am I gonna fall off? Can I fall off? Nope. Oh! It's a dur. Hey, dur. Get out of here, dur. Did you see the rack on that, dur? Our family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day. Then, every other day. You go to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, If you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide to not see your old friends that much. Julia's Sister Suit, 1989. Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. I'm a little concerned. Months go by. Bucket dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less. And seeing her less and less makes her forget you more. You think. Summer is coming. You see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Loading. Can I move faster than a wall? No. Walk to the tower. Walk to the tower. Oh, a couple of propane tanks. I'm going to have to walk all the way back around and grab those later. Well, I'm going to try and keep these about 15 minutes. We're, we're a little over time already. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, I'm going to restart current day. Well, I'll restart the game, I bet, but I'm going to save the game here. I'm going to stop here before I get into the lookout tower. I'm running out of time uh, for this episode. So, uh, it was very interesting so far. We found out that our wife is uh, predisposed to brain damage, which is very sad. Uh, I'm very curious if she wandered out into the woods. If that's going to be the story. Or if this is just a part of the job. And we're this. I don't know. But they're, they're not going to put this much into it. And have absolutely nothing mean anything. So. I suppose that's going to be the end of this episode. Uh, if you liked the video. I'm glad you liked the video. Uh, I don't know how to close an episode. I didn't think that far ahead. I probably should have. So I'm just going to say thank you for watching. Goodbye.